guys, Jamie here, keeping it coy. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. And I hope to earn your subscription today. So today is just a follow on from what you guys saw last night. It's the same day from me. Um, I still look rough, still full of COVID, but we're plodding along. I say, I'll get the filter house done <clears throat> as soon as I'm uh, feeling a bit better. But yeah, just a follow on from uh, last night's video. Obviously you saw me move uh, three of the bigger fish from the vat here um, down there. Um, and now you're gonna see me move some of the fish out of that vat down here. Um, a few people did ask me, um, why am I doing this? In fact, let me get out of the way of the sun. There we go. Yeah, why am I doing this? What's the point of it? Well. I probably didn't explain myself very well, but uh, obviously I need to move some more fry out of the fish tank um, out here because the fish tank is getting a bit crowded now. Um, so that's re main reason number one. That's the most important reason because I need to empty a couple of fish out of the fish tank. So the more room I can make, I've got a bug on me, or a spider in my hair or whatever it is. Can you see it? No, I think it's gone. Whoop, whoop. Um, but yeah, the more room I can make in this uh, Blagden vat down here, the more fish I can get out of the fish tank, which is going to help the fish in the fish tank. Second reason is once the pond here is finished, basically I don't want to put any fish in there that's too small to go in there. After all the things from, from fellow YouTubers that I've seen and heard of, obviously last year, um, sorry about the motorbikes. Um, last year, Daniel from Danny's Koi Pond, he lost one of his uh, fish, I think it was his Chagoy, uh, down the bottom drain and ended up in the drum uh, for a few days. Um, and still doing well, survived, great, brilliant. But uh, recently, um, up, north Koi, up north Koi Pond, um, bless his heart, he's just lost his Goshki um, up one of the uh, inlets. Uh, to the pond um, and got stuck up there um, so yeah and obviously uh, Gary from Pond and Garden he's uh, lost a couple not not lost lost but kept finding a, a couple of his smaller ones in the uh, skimmer um, which my skimmer is over there uh, under that bit of line I obviously haven't cut it out yet but uh, yeah so because of that I don't want to put any fish in the pond that could fit in any one of those three gaps because I've got a uh, an inlet just down here and um, that's a two inch inlet so it's pretty big um, and then I've got obviously my skimmer here and the uh, the bottom drain not that you can see it from this angle but down there um, so all the fish now or that will be left in that blue vat down there will be all big enough to go straight into this pond when it's finished um, there won't be that many there's the three that I've just put in there the two really big ones that I, well it's really big to me um, not to some of your fish that you guys have got out there but uh, yeah the two bigger ones that were already in there so that's five and then there's the uh, at Surrey uh, that's in there as well that's big enough to go uh, straight in I do also have the two uh, in there the Kamon Ryu and the um, Akamatsuba that are probably big enough to go straight in there um, the other ones that are currently in the blue vat that I'm about to move down into the Blagden um, possibly are big enough as I said they're, they're around 20 centimeters I think I haven't had them out um, since they went in there but they were only about 12 to 15 centimeters when I put them in there um, and I say that's been unheated pretty much most of the winter um so uh yeah we will uh see on the size but i'm, I'm going to put them in here anyway just uh while i'm moving the fry out and that will help kick start the filters if i just have five or six in the main pond here and um, that will help kick start the filters um and not overcrowd them and then uh, it will give me a bit more room to move some of the fish out of the fish tank into this grow on I can then dismantle um, and get rid of the blue vat because um, all the fish from in there will be in here 
and then one at a time every time I need to move a fish out of the fish tank I can move a fry out of the fish tank into here and when this thing starts getting overcrowded I can move whichever fish is the biggest currently in here into the main pond it's like one a week you know something like that and just bring the big the big pond um, up bit by bit um, you know as to, to let the filters uh, catch up and kicking the good thing is that big pond will have that uh, shower uh, straight on it so that obviously will already be mature just the k1 media uh, which is currently down here Got that bag there and that bag there the k1 media um, that will be in the drum filter obviously won't be mature but what i'm going to do when i move the uh, shower off of here and put it on the big pond obviously i'll be closing that vat down pretty much on the same day so the filtration that's currently on that vat will come down here and go on the Blagden um, as well as obviously the big 30,000 litre pressure filter. So that's the plan, I hope that's uh, a bit more understood now. Um, let's crack on with it, let's go see what fish I'm pulling out of there to go into here. So I've decided to take this one out of the, uh, the small vat as well, this is my uh, Kamon Ryu. Um, he's also grown quite well, um, just over 30 centimetres, really? just over 30 centimetres, um, as you can see, really doesn't like being bold, so I'm just going to get this one bagged up quickly and uh, take it down the uh, down the vat, but when I got him, he was absolutely perfectly symmetrical with the black on both sides, with a nice white gap down the middle, and uh, oh, no, I'm going to have to get him moved, um, last winter he went completely black, and then once I've moved him into the heated pond, the white started coming back. Um, he's a bit unsymmetrical now, but I just love his fins. Um, as you can see, they're perfectly symmetrical with the, uh, the bit of black there and right at the front and start of his fins. But uh, yeah, great body shape. As you can see, his uh, dorsal fin's gone a bit, a bit red. He's a bit stressed being in the bowl, so I'm going to quickly get him bagged up now and take him down the, uh, the blue vat. So the Cremonry who's uh, now in the blue vat and then lastly this is my Akamatsuba if he wants to come into the light so you can see him there he is uh, exactly 30 centimetres this one not the best uh, quality Akamatsuba but you just don't see them uh, very often in the shops these days so I'm uh, going to be keeping this one for another year or two see how he develops and turns out but Again, another great fish. Um, just coming up to two years old, this one. Uh, the Kamon Ryu is the same. Um, I got this one, the Kamon Ryu, and the uh, the big Chagoy, um, all at the same time. Um, it'll be two in August. So, still a toe sight at the minute, and 30 centimetres, so he's done really, really well. Oh, I'll get him bagged up and get him down in the blue vat and then I'll show you which ones are coming out of the blue vat and going in the uh, heated vat down this end so this is the first one out of the uh, blue vat going into the pond that's going to be heated uh, just over 25 centimeters pretty much 26 and that's my uh, Jinrin Chag as you can see by the tip of his fin uh, this guy does suffer uh, with koi pox um, because the temperatures have been a bit warmer lately it has uh, gone away quite a lot it's the best he's uh, ever looked to be honest he normally gets a quite a big blob on the back of his tail a very big blob on the edge of his fin and uh, as I've said before quite a big uh, blob on the end of his nose when I first got him I was quite worried that it was so big I didn't think he'd be able to eat but uh, yeah he's done uh, done really well I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this one or not because of the amount of koi box he had but this year he's looking an awful lot better an awful lot better so hopefully he will continue to improve because um, his, his scale pattern is just absolutely stunning he really does shine in the uh, in the sun this fella so uh, yeah I'll get this one bagged up and uh, start transferring him to the pond that's going to be eated So here is the famous fully scaled Deutz Kahaku. Um, anyone that's been following me for a while uh, 
will have heard me mention this fella a fair few times but as you can see he's a kahaku not the bestest uh, of pattern kahakus granted he's sort of one and a bit step <laughs> if his spot was any further forward you could call him a tancho but uh yeah, he's uh, absolutely stunning, got an awesome body shape, obviously armour plated scales all down his back, but if I can uh, gently just grab hold of him for a second. Come here. As you could see on that side, absolutely fully scaled, and same on that side. So yeah, if anyone actually knows what you should call a fully scaled Deutz fish um, let me know but, uh, let's see if I can get a size while I'm in the in the bowl 20 25 on the dot so yeah another one that's 25 same size as the uh, Chag I want to try and get them to 30 really before I uh, put them in the pond because uh, although I don't think they could fit down the bottom drain I want to be uh, safe than sorry so I've, uh, as you all know I've reduced the temperature in the, uh, the heated vat um, there is a few degrees difference between them at the minute um, but uh, that's warmer than, than this one so let them float for half hour 45 minutes Get them up to temperature. I think this one's currently sat at, uh, to be honest, I can't remember. I checked earlier. But yeah, there's about two degrees difference between them at the minute. But yeah, so I'll get him bagged up and get him floating as well. This one is or was my Tancho. Um, his colour's actually starting to fade on the back part of his head. Um, but as, as you can see by one of his fins there, um, he has developed a, a bit of a red fin. Uh, so not the perfect of Tancho's, and I don't know whether you could make it quite make it out there. Oh, I've still got the water. I keep topping it up as I'm taking obviously some water over, but yeah, there you go, you can see it now. He's also got one little red spot on the side of his body. So certainly not the uh, perfect of uh, Tancho's, but still very nice fish great body shape again lovely scalation pattern on here and with his one gin ring uh, scale on his back he's uh, stunning we'll see if we can get a measurement on him this one's a very skittish fish so I uh, have to be very slow and steady with this one come on no oh, he's not going to play ball one handed so I will snap back to you when I know how big he is so the Tancho was 23 centimetres and this one is my lovely two-step Kahaku. You can see there on the side of his cheek, um, on this side, that he does get a bit of koi pox on that side, but he is absolutely stunning. He does have one tiny black dot um, near his head. I don't know if you can quite make it out there on the camera, but uh, yeah, I really like this fish. Hopefully he'll grow up to be a stunning little fish, or hopefully a big fish. Out of all the kahakus in this fat, I got them all at the same time, the Tancho, um, the fully scaled Deutz kahaku, and uh, this fella, all at the same time. And this one, by the looks of him, is the biggest out of the three. So hopefully he'll grow up to be a nice size fish, but these guys have obviously never been really heated, so let's see if we can get a size on him. No, they don't want me to do it one handed, do they? No, face this way. No, nope. not going to let me do it one handed, so again, I'll get a measurement on this one and snap back to an abyssal. Well, it wasn't actually the biggest, he was 24 centimetres. But uh, the last fish that will be moving into the heated vat is this fella. I was sold this one as a uh, Tancho Benny Kiki Curio. Um, but as you can see, he's no longer a Tancho, he's got uh, his, his head has spread and he's got quite a few uh, Benny dots down his back but he's a lovely Deutz fish this guy is completely scaleless he's got one well I say completely he's got one armor plated scale um, along his back um, 
near his tail but that is it and he is absolutely beautiful he's silky smooth so yeah i really like this fish probably won't let me get a measurement one-handed but we'll give it a go uh, i'd say around 22 by the look of that but let's have a look i'm gonna play ball buddy he is 20 yeah 22 really good body shape on this one very powerful looking fish so i hope this one uh, does really well when he's uh, a bit bigger but yeah the reason why both of these are currently in the vat together is the last bag that i tried to uh, bag this one up as i picked it up it had some major holes in it um, so these two are gonna have to share a bag while they uh, float and get to the uh, other vat's temperature so uh, i'll bag these up and snap back to you in a second so that's it for the day as you can see they're all floating um, I'll start acclimatising them uh, to their new water although it's all out of the same tap so it uh, should be pretty similar I would have thought but uh, I'll just put some water in their bags they've been floating now for about 15 minutes so I'll give them another 15-20 uh, minutes check the temperatures in the bags and, uh, and go from there but yeah thanks for watching guys hope you like the, uh, the video uh, the pond will be finished within the next uh, couple of weeks, so uh, stay tuned for, for those videos, um, and we will catch you all on the next one. So yeah guys, uh, thanks for watching, um, hope you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe and all that. Um, again, massive thank you to all my subscribers, um, really appreciate uh, your, your support and whatnot. Um, but yeah, as, as I said uh, earlier, if, if anybody does know, um what a fully scaled Deutz fish would be called let me know if there is actually a name for it um other than that again thanks for watching and we'll catch you all on the next one <music>